This magic sheet shows how you can use images in a magic sheet. You can also use them as a background image, as I told you, and then place icons on top, or you can actually use images as objects. Because you can import your images into your magic sheets, this has made it necessary for us to change the way the show file is handled. Show files now contain all the show data and all the images you've imported into your magic sheets. This makes the show file portable from one console to the next uh, and ensures that your magic sheet will look the same in all cases. This magic sheet is really simple. All it does is trigger section markers in the sequence on the main playback. Section markers are simply like bookmarks. They're jump to points. They perform a go-to command on their own, and they are a type of target object that you can use in a magic sheet. You could use regular buttons for this. You could reassign a, a channel icon if you wish. You can draw your own. And in this particular case, I took stills from the production and turned them into little preview buttons for the songs that they're meant to trigger. To do this, we need two things. We need the images themselves, and then we need to assign the images to the specific target object that they are meant to trigger. Images are brought in under the image tab in the Magic Sheet tools. So you can see here some thumbnails of the images that we've used in the Magic Sheet. These are all the images on your console. So if you have a lot of them, this list can get very, very long. And at the very bottom of the list is an import image icon. In this dialog, you'll see whatever drives are attached, your external USB, for example. You can navigate to the folder that contains the images you need, pick the image you want, hit OK, and it will import that image into this tool. Once it's imported, just like anything else, you pick the image and you drag it into the magic sheet, and there it is for your use. Deleting objects, very simply, press the delete key on the external keyboard and that selected object should disappear. So we can zoom in using the mouse wheel or using your pinch zoom, or using format in the wheel. And you can see on some of these images that there's a little number in the middle. That's actually the number of the section marker in this particular case, the target item. It would be the channel number if it were a channel object. These section marker numbers actually come from the buttons in the direct select. So if you want to figure out how to do this on your own, simply ensure that your direct selects are displaying the section markers and the exact numbers you see on these buttons here are the numbers that correspond to the marker you want to trigger with this image. And then very simply, either by touch or by using the mouse, whichever one you want, you'll see the target here is a section marker. By opening this, you can see all the possible targets you can choose. And then the actual target number goes in this cell here. Number 10 will trigger the same thing that our button number 10 here does. The text you see in these particular images in this example are texts I entered into the image itself in Photoshop. So the name that you see on the button in the direct selects will not automatically be carried over into this image. You can resize the images using the grab handles. You can rotate them. You can do whatever you want with them in your magic sheet. You're probably best served, however, if you're going to do a lot of button stuff that you have an image size that doesn't have to be tweaked, just as a hint. If you can normalize those images that you're going to use to a useful size, that's a good thing to do before you bring the images into the system. You can see this very nice grid. In this case, I imported each individual image, and then I used the alignment tools. Remember the alignment tools here to get them all lined up with each other very nicely into this grid shape. One of the other items you might have noticed inside this particular magic sheet is the clock. So this takes its settings from the clock in your system. And it is also something that you can play with. When you go into editing mode, it always shows 12 o'clock but we can, make it, uh, we can make it bigger, the field itself, and then you can make the font bigger and you can change its color and it's all fantastic. So if I say 144 here and I make it a different color like hot pink because that's great for heavy metal and italics and so on and so forth, I can underline it. Uh, now you can see my clock is much bigger and a slightly different format. So. If you need a big clock on your screen, you can build one using the magic sheet function. 
Another thing magic sheets are used for in version 8 is to create your image effect layouts. In the previous versions, the image effect layout editor was a subset of the channel layout editor. Image effect layouts contain channels only. They're used for mapping out pixel maps so that you can apply an image to a set of channels and their placement on the screen in a grid determines which pixel of the image is generating the data for that particular channel. If you also wanted a mimic of this layout in your channel layout, you would have to do that activity twice in the old system, once to create the layout for the effect and a second time to create the arrangement of channels for your mimic and your channel layout. This is no longer necessary. So if I wish to create a new one, I will call it a PixMap for no other reason than that's what we're about to do. This is a two-step process. You want to insert the channels and create an array of the channels first, and then we're going to lay a pixel grid on top of it that uh, defines those underlying channels as part of an image effect layout. What I have to do before all of that, though, is an extra step, and that is actually insert a layout into the old list view. So I'll clear my browser to make it smaller under effects, image effects, effect layouts. This opens the list view. I've got one inserted already, but I can insert another one here. Let's say 10 by 10. So I have one that's a five by five grid we'll use for this example. I've just inserted another one, so we have another opportunity later on. This is where you define the sizes of those grids. That's what the Magic Sheet Editor needs to know when it creates a pixel grid, how big is that grid meant to be? So this is where that definition step happens. So now we've got them in there. You can give them names. Actually, names are always recommended. So I'll call that five by five, 10 by 10. So here we are back in our empty Magic Sheet. I'll open up my tools. And we'll go back into our icons here. That's that pixel grid, remember? But what we need to do first is get the channels in there. So I'm going to pick the pixel circle object. And I'm going to bring that guy into my magic sheet. And in this case, he's very small. We're going to work on a 5x5 five five so we can make him bigger. Because he's the first one I've dragged in, and because he came from this channel menu, he's automatically set to a target of channel and he's automatically set to a target of channel one. I can move him around freely on the grid. You can see the snap action happening there. If I don't want the snapping, I can turn off the grid and now I can move this object freely on the screen. So that's just up to you. We'll leave the grid on for a moment. Inside this cursor menu, for my array that I'm about to create, I need to give the system some hints about what my intentions are. So I need to tell it that I'm going to be working with channels. I need to set the start number of the next thing that's inserted, which in this case, I'm going to do channels 1 through 25. So the next item is going to be channel 2, as it's shown here. And the increment of insertion, so I want to insert the next available channel after that. If I did an increment of 2 or an increment of 10, it would do 1, 11, 21, and so on and so forth based on these starting numbers and the increment numbers. So right now, start with the next channel, channel two, increment by one channel. Now I can go into my array tool, choose my shape. We'll stick with the simple ones right now. And then I can start entering values. So I want five columns and five rows. Spacing will determine how much space is left between the icons as they're inserted in the array. and for a rectangular array of this type, to get the fastest pixel map laid out, we recommend a spacing of two. When I click OK, you can now see I have a lovely square, five by five, channels one through 25 of pixel objects. And we can just leave this alone right now, because the next thing we want to do is add in the grid. Here's my pixel grid object. I pick that guy and I drag him into the view. And you can see he doesn't match because he doesn't actually know anything about the layout of my pixels at this point in time. This is the first time I've done one of these. It's automatically set to an effect layout grid, and it's automatically choosing number one from the effect layout list we created. 
If you hadn't inserted any effect layouts in that list, then you would essentially have a single cell grid at this point because it doesn't know how big it needs to be. It's possible that when you insert a pixel map or an effect layout grid, that these internal lines don't appear. If that's the case, simply close and open the editing tools again, and the lines should be drawn for you. So now that I have the lines, I can reselect this guy, and I can change his shape so that it matches or more closely resembles the layout of pixels that I have. And you can zoom in, of course, and rearrange things, so on and so forth. But like I said, what you really want at this point is, generally speaking, one pixel in each cell. And as you probably want to do is you want to align that a little bit better so you hit the arrows and you can see it's jumping around. That's because that grid is enabled. If we turn the grid off, now you can reselect the grid and move it with much more fine control until you have your pixels laid out the way you want them. So it's slightly fiddly, but you only have to do it once. And now it's done, you have a magic sheet that has the mimic in it. And the magic sheet is being used in order to create that graphical relationship between the pixel's location in space and the pixel's location on an image that would overlay this grid by using an image effect playback. Close off that editor, and there you go. This is a very simple layout, five by five square grid, no gaps, nothing special about the layout. You can, of course, lay out your pixels individually. You can come in in the editor and rearrange. If we send the pixel grid to the bottom of the stack, now you can select individual icons and move them around in the space uh, to rearrange your pixels once the grid has been set up or to create a very customized view whichever way works best for you. But to get those really simple, big arrays in, this is the fastest path.